Uh, my name's Thurza Cuthand, and my film is Extractions. It's about um, extractive capitalism and colonialism um, in Canada and abroad, and it's playing in Forum Expanded. After talking with various friends recently, I started coming to terms with the fact that in this capitalist system, there are no easy outs. We are all complicit in resource extraction, war profiteering, land theft, on and on down the list it goes. We're in the middle of a mass extinction event and people keep voting in conservative politicians that will maintain the course to doom. But this is all hard to talk about at an art event. I hear a lot about decolonization. And while it's a nice word and has some lofty premise, I actually don't know what it would look like in daily practice. There is some intergenerational trauma that's been handed down as my ancestors were being colonized. Some smallpox survival, wars, influenza, residential school, day school. My grandfather decided not to teach his children Plains Cree because he thought it would hold them back, so I only know a few words. I know my family had medicine people on both sides, but at some point my family took on Christianity and I can't blame them for that. They were adapting to survive. There are still medicine people in my family, but whatever stuff I have is diagnosed as bipolar disorder and I take medications for it. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean-Bor Bobak and this time we are discussing the film Extractions by Thursa Cothand. Hi, welcome to the festival. Um, it's very nice to have you here with us. Uh, can you just maybe start with explaining a bit about um, about resource extractions and the political context of that in, in Canada? Um, yeah, basically Canada is a colonial um, country um, and I'm indigenous so it affects me because it was where, where I'm my land is, um, but resource extraction has been used like as part of colonialism to sort of dispossess indigenous people of our lands and um, and it's used as part of colonialism to um, sort of like as, as not only in Canada but also like around the world to like take resources from indigenous communities and and it's not necessarily that we want to use the resources ourselves but it's more that yeah. it keeps us from our using our lands traditionally. Yeah, right. So in this sense the film really links together the personal and the political which mainly comes through the narration of the film. So can you talk a bit about your approach to narrate this, uh, this film and how exactly personal and political meets in the film? Um, yeah, I mean, in the film, like I talk about resource extraction, but it's also like paralleling it to moments in my life, like when I lived in a logging community where there was like a lot of racism, which was part and parcel of of the sort of like frontier mentality of that community and um, also with resource extraction just like how it's affected indigenous communities and how there's um, apprehensions of indigenous children in Canada that are kind of parallel to resource extraction because those apprehensions are used to like create money for like largely white social services in Canada. Yeah. yeah. So, and I want to have children, so it's like constantly this right. worry, like, what if that happens to, to yes. my kids? Yeah. Know? And then you also link queerness to that. There mm -hmm. is one particular part in the movie where you talk about your experiences as a queer indigenous person and all the hostility that you had to face. So can you talk a bit about this aspect of the film? Yeah, that was mostly um, talking about that logging community. Like it was, um, it was when I lived there, it was a very short time in my life. But it was very, um, it made a big impact on me. And I was just coming to terms with my sexuality. Like I, I literally came out to myself like a few months after we left. And, um, but I remember when we moved there, there was so much, there was so much hostility, especially over my gender presentation, because I was already like gender non-conforming. I was a tomboy. I was like growing into like being a butch person. And, and um, so, you know, like small town mentality, like they did not, they did not accept that. And I think it was, I think it was because of the, the logging industry yeah. and the ranching, just kind of exploiting right. the land. Yeah. And just yeah. <laughs> so many things. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk a bit about the imagery of the, of the film. Um, 
at the same time, all these things that the narration brings up, it's really heavy and it's, it's very political. And, but the images that we see at certain points, at least they are like actually very beautiful. They are meditative as well. So I felt like that there was a bit of a tension between the two, which, which could function as a very creative tension. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because like most of the footage in there is like stock footage from like yeah. um, Pond5 and Prelinger archive. And um, they're like, like resource extraction. It does look very, like they're very stunning images, you know, because yeah. they're like so epic. Yeah, and, so grand, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I didn't like, I didn't make compositional choices so much in like how those, because I didn't shoot a lot of the, the footage, but um, I don't know, um, how do I want to say, I guess, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's eerie, yeah. it's eerie how, how yeah. beautiful it is, but also how it's, it, like, it's malevolent. Like, yeah. like when I think of that beehive burner, the like yes. torching thing yeah. that's burning sawdust and stuff, it's like, like I remember when I would see that as a kid, it was this, it was <laughs> very horrifying, yeah, even though I like imagine. I didn't really know like all the politics around it. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the film also works um, as a criticism of capitalist society and, and the mechanisms of, of that. Um, can you walk us through your thoughts about that? I mean, it comes through the movie as well, but just for, for a bit of an elaboration on that. Um, yeah, I mean, resource extraction, especially in Canada, well, and globally is like so much like it's so much tied into capitalism and capitalism is just about like exponential growth and and it's like our world can't bear it or like we're, we're suffering climate change because people keep like wanting to like get everything from the planet that they can while they can and um, and it's not it's not sustainable and and it's killing us and <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just and um, yeah capitalism is not it's not going to survive, I don't think. Well, we're not going to survive if it does survive. So, yeah, so I, yeah. either or has to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, you also mentioned, which I thought was very interesting, the privilege not to care. Can you explain us what you, what you mean by that? In the film? Yeah, I mean, I think people who, like very privileged people, like, like the upper class who have like lots of money and yeah. who are like kind of, I think they're kind of insulated from a lot of the effects of climate change. Like even, even in Canada, like we are feeling the effects, but like not like the global south, um, right. you know, like, like we're insulated from it a little bit, even though like the north is melting and um, yeah, like, and, and rich people are like gonna be able to like have have their mercenaries keep us out of their compounds when, when yeah. we're all scrabbling for like whatever's left, right? So yeah. yeah, yeah. So like there are people who like just don't, they don't have to care. Right. Really. Yeah. You also look into the future, and I thought it was very interesting because all these heavy stuff came up in the film, but at the same time, towards the end, it really becomes hopeful. And you talk a lot about hope, and that maybe it's just something that. Um, the system tries to make us believe that there is no hope and that our future is basically screwed already. Um, can you talk a bit about this, this very positive outcome of the film? Because I think at the end it became very empowering and very positive and hopeful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's because because I want to have children. So of course, people are like, you know, like, why do you want to have kids? Like, we're not gonna like, <laughs> we're not gonna make yeah. it. And um, like I was talking about with a reporter recently about this idea of like chaotic joy, like something something might come out of the chaos that is gonna like save us. Like there might be someone who has like answers that if like we listen, we'll like get help um, finally. Um, and also just because I think I think if we give in to like apathy, like I think I think that just paves the way for more resource extraction and more like exploitation of the world, yeah. like in population and our our. our our Earth itself. Yeah. yeah. So you do have a positive outlook yeah. and, a, and, and much hope for the future. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's wonderful. Thank you so much for the interview, mm. and we wish you all the best for the Berlinale. Enjoy, and we will see you around for sure. Yeah. Thank yeah. You Thanks so for much. the interview. Thank you. Thanks.